So my name is Balpuri Remling. I'm a lithography printer and I have a um, background in arts, like fine arts. So I have a uh, Master of Fine Arts focused on printmaking and especially lithography. And uh, before I moved here three weeks ago, I did, um, I had a shop in Helsinki, which is the capital of Finland, south of Finland, um, together with two other tamarind trained printers. Um, men older than me. They had the shop before I actually. So I had that job as collaborative printer, you know, exactly like here and like the shop manager. So, and then I taught lithography and offset printing in the University of Helsinki the Fine Arts Academy. Lithography is a printmaking technique, so it's art on paper. Uh, it can be also something old that you find and it's commercial printing, but it's always ink on paper. Okay, it could be something else than paper, but let's start from paper. <laughs> and um, fine art lithography is something where it's a original artwork made in the means of lithography um, equipment. So it could be something that you use a plate to draw on or a stone or um, even a mylar and then exposed it but something that you work with directly to the matrix, the lithography matrix, whatever you choose it to be. And then you print it by hand or with a sort of half automatic uh, uh, printing press. And then you sign it and then <laughs> and uh, you could do an edition if you wanted to, or you could be one of a kind. Um, I, I mean, that's what it is. I mean, there's a lot of technical stuff about what lithography is compared to other printmaking mediums, but I don't think that's gonna, that's not the essence. That's just the way it happens. The essence is that it's art on paper and it's ink deep in the pores of the paper and it's beautiful and it's matte and it's layered and it's just versatile, very versatile. It can look like so many, so many things. I guess when I went to do my um, uh, undergrad, I went to Estonia, and it's a very traditional school. Like uh, <laughs> this is the cleaning guy. <laughs> it's like a very traditional um, school that kind of separates all the techniques, and you know, it's very sort of old-fashioned in a way. And, and I think I found a lot of that being very sort of laborsome and not very. Like there was an, a wow factor in like, let's say in Taglio or Woodcut or something like that that we would do. And then we tried Litho and it was like a super tiny shop and like tiny, tiny stones. But there was something about, it sounds so nerdy, but and like classic answer, but it was something about the depth of the colors on the paper. Um, it was just so intense, like the black was so intense. And I don't know, I think I've found something there that I just kind of fell in love with. And then I went to do my graduate studies in Helsinki, the same university that I taught at. And my teacher was a tamarind printer. Um, and then I started doing litho there. And that was only when I sort of realized what actually lithography is and what you can do with it and why and how it works and what are the possibilities. And that was just a scratch. And then he was like, after I graduated, he said, well, should you, you should probably go to tamarind and you know, come back and then you know work with us at the shop and I was like well I kind of like was debating like I just graduated as an artist like should I maybe keep up with that or is that too soon like to you know usually in Finland it's a tiny country when you graduate you get name a little bit because the papers are going to write about the graduate show and if you keep on giving shows and exhibitions and putting your work out there it's a possibility that you can really do well like one of the major galleries is going to pick you up and I got good feedback, but I thought that lithography was so cool that I want to do that. And then I just absolutely got, I was here for two years and I went home and I think it took me like a year and a half before I even did my first own, my own piece in lithography, you know. Um, I do remember the first print I printed for myself that I'm very proud of because it was huge. It was four full sheets. So it was like 88 by 60 inches and it was a photocopy transfer 
on stone, uh, four stones, and then um, I drew, did some crayon work on top of that, and it was massive, and I was so happy. It's printed like shit, because I was, <laughs> it's really badly printed. Um, I was in um, school still, and I didn't know, you know, all the um, mistakes, the printing mistakes that you can do. And so I didn't detect them, but I still, I'm still really proud of that one. Um, and I think Nicolas prints that we did here, Nicola Lopez, that Bill and I did, it's a, it's a uh, set of three prints and there's a lot of layers, a lot of cutting, a lot of sort of in and out the paper and like little cuts to the paper and then like these forms and different materials on top of each other, chincole, gluing and taping and like those are really complicated. So just the process was so, I remember just being like baffled, like how am I, how, how are we gonna be able to do this? And I, the um, advice that she left for us was like, <laughs> I don't know if that anything, but somehow it came together. Yeah. So yeah, I'm proud of that. There, there are so many steps. Um, in the process and it could you could you could step back and forth and back and forth and I guess if there's a lot of steps back and forth in the processing of or stabilizing your image then stabilizing your image might become an issue or a problem um, if you didn't know what you were doing or or um, something went wrong in between <sighs> what would go wrong maybe that's that's the hardest part it's just to get a stable the right kind of image for the right kind of matrix so that when you're editioning because editioning is basically just fighting against the stones or the plates will to do nasty things <laughs> so that the fight would be not so aggressive and the editioning would go smoothly i think just being focused on on the processing part is that, that's i don't know if that's the hardest but that's the most important for sure and in that sense yeah maybe it's the hardest Uh, well, maybe there's like there's so much mm -hmm. about it. Mm, not, this doesn't affect when I'm working with an artist. I love the, the possibilities, and I can you know feed the artist the possibilities according to what I think they need. But when doing your own artwork, when you know so much about something and you're trying to limit it down, it might take over your artistic um, language or whatever your vision. your vision yeah you start working through the technique and I don't know if it shows and it's kind of like a well I think that's like maybe it's not lithography's fault it's my fault <laughs> Because I have an education of an artist um, and then I have an education of a printer and I do combine them in my own artwork but that's not anymore where my heart and my focus is. My heart and my focus is on printing for other people. So in that sense I'm not, I, I think on paper I'm an artist but in practice, in real life I'm not. I was very sort of, I don't know how to, I mean, did lithographs, that's what I did. I did some welding before and stuff, but lately it was just lithographs, mainly because the shop we had was for lithograph, yeah. you know, so I couldn't, I didn't have um, other means um, or ways to work, but my work is very sort of, it's humoristic, uh, kind of lightweight, sort of just this quirky, just, uh, about just everyday life. They're kind of like still lifes, I would say. They're somewhat fantasized still lifes, but they've got a starting point of a still life of some, some very sort of, you know, like your laundry hanging or your um, cords all mixed up on, on the floor or something like an eyesore around you that we think is an eyesore, but we live around every day. But when the magazine comes to photograph your home, they don't do those parts like your dishes in a pile. and but I use more romantic sort of pastel colors to sort of give them that light, beautiful, um, like beautify them in a way. I am very much into drawing. Yeah. I actually painting, like just holding a brush for painting purposes, especially straight on paper or canvas is physically even kind of awkward to me. <laughs> There's a new one that I think of every day. 
um, I was asked this question in my interview for the job and I I think I answered um, like a couple of new artists that I just recently went to see their exhibitions once one was Koss he does these huge sculptures and paintings and kind of like anime style he's just like I think just like a person who's not afraid of any material and I like that about him and then there's this artist this painter called Jonas Wood and uh, I just I just think his paintings are just they are almost lith they'd be so much better if they were lithographs <laughs> and I think he does do some prints but he hasn't done any with us so there'd be someone and those are realistic in a, in somewhat realistic wishes mm -hmm. but um, if I had to choose some that was not so realistic maybe or like I don't know if those are even but Ed Roche would be a really 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 cool one to have yeah or David Hockney. David yeah, that would be, and and if you can start bringing people, you know, yeah. alive back again, then <laughs> there'd be more, more. But uh, yeah. Well, usually the people who get into lithography either have relatives or friends that do it, or then they are art students. Like, there's not many people who sort of like start off like, I want to be a lithographer. It's not a thing that you, <laughs> you don't, people, you don't ask little kids and they don't answer, I want to be a lithographer. Um, so I guess when you go, when you're in art, if you're an art student, say, and you're kind of interested in lithography and you find out that there's a whole world of collaborative printing and you get interested in that, then give yourself that possibility of not putting yourself down for not doing your own fine art only like that there's only so many years in one person's life and then you can't have your foot in on two grounds on two continents <laughs> literally um, so you just really have to focus on something and if that's what your heart feels then put your heart and soul in it and come to tamarind and do the ptp and then <laughs> you're one step closer to your dream i'm actually in the goal right now because i just started here you know, this is my second week, and um, I never even dreamt of being, I don't know, I guess it's a goal that I was not afraid to try and shoot, but, but um, yeah, it's kind of, it's an absurd situation for me. This is a very sort of a crazy situation to be in. And because of that, I'm not dreaming of anything at the moment. I'm just kind of living, <laughs> I think I'm living my dream right now. And it's really you know, exciting and scary and intimidating and, and wonderful and so many things at the same time that I don't have time and space in my brain to dream. <laughs> um, I just want to be healthy and be able to work, you know, physically stay in the, in the condition that I can work for a long time. It's, and it's been a weird two weeks, you know, we haven't had an artist in yet and we've had the director um, interviews and stuff and presentations, so it's been a very different two weeks. Um, but yeah, I'm really loving it. I'm just, I don't know, going through where things are and how things work here and, you know, getting back to the climate and trying to settle in, you know, get, get our place and everything that goes outside tamarind also but even inside here just trying to find my place back here and trying just to keep a positive mind um, about everything like not to get overwhelmed by the challenges that are gonna <laughs> be um, waiting for me in the future.